It's an exciting moment. They will dive into the depths of the Antarctic Ocean for scientific research. But the mission is not without its dangers, and they approach the iceberg slowly and cautiously. Yeah, I've got visual on the deer. Guys, so once you're happy and you put each other visual, you are clear to land. The deer venting there, over. OK, have a good dive. The two submersibles will stay close together in case they encounter any problems. Okay. More than 90% of an iceberg floats below the surface, so they could hit a wall at any time. Coming in, uh, yeah. They've come as close as they dare. Below water, the iceberg has an extraordinary sculpted surface, like a honeycomb sponge. By the way, this is quite spectacular. This. Yes. The team within the submersible are warm enough but the surrounding water is particularly cold. Pure water freezes at zero degrees centigrade, but seawater, being salty, doesn't do so until nearly two degrees lower. In the dark depths, they can just make out the base of the iceberg. Seems quite empty. It does seem quite empty. They're only 50 meters below the surface, but there is no sign of life here. The submersible descends further. Control, control, Nadia. On bottom, standby, bottom report. Mm. Temperature is minus 1.2. They've reached the sea floor and a depth of 500 meters. The Antarctic Ocean is cooled by floating ice, so the water near the surface is actually colder than that at the bottom. To their surprise, the sea floor is covered in living organisms. The team hadn't expected to find such a rich and colourful variety of creatures at these depths. What looks like an underwater garden is in fact a community not of plants, but animals. As the submersible drifts across the bottom, it appears to disturb some of the residents. They're feather stars, ancient marine invertebrates that can use their long arms to propel themselves through the water. Feather stars spend most of their time on the sea floor, but will swim to avoid predators. Landing. Yeah. Many of the seafloor residents are filter feeders that sift out plankton from the water. These pink, alien-looking creatures are called sea pigs. They're bottom feeders and live in the deepest parts of the ocean.
a ring of tentacles on their feet, pick up sediment from the sea floor and transport it to their mouths. They move at a slow and leisurely pace, so not to waste energy. So this is a nice fish. Wow, is that a nice fish? Nice fish, yes. The strange pale fish is an ambush predator that lies in wait, resting on the seafloor on stilt-like fins. Ice fish are unique to this environment. And unusually, their blood is colorless and transparent. What could be the reason for this? All other animals with a backbone have red blood cells which help to transport oxygen around the body. So how do ice fish manage without it? It seems they compensate by having a larger heart and wider blood vessels so that their blood circulates more quickly. And since cold water has a higher oxygen content, ice fish appear to manage perfectly well. But the team are hoping to catch a glimpse of an Antarctic giant, and they soon strike lucky. Oh, and a big starfish. Look there, look at the size of that thing. Oh, yeah. Squid? Squid. Is that Squid? right in front of you? The starfish seems to be enormous. Judging from the size of the ice fish next to it, the octopus starfish could be over a foot across, bigger than a large pizza. Another octopus starfish is wrapped around a marine sponge. Most sponges are no larger than a human fist, but this one is huge. It's an example of sponge which can grow to 50 and in some place to one meter high. 